my Redeemer, lift my voice to praise my Lord. Ransom by His blood and mercy, I am His forevermore. I've known here on earth with those forgiven and one day around his throne I will sing of my Redeemer lift my voice to praise my Lord ransom by his blood and mercy I am his forevermore I am his
The Lord is risen. Good. Welcome. We are glad to see all of you here today. And we welcome all of our visitors and family and people from out of town and, and whoever you are. We're glad that you're with us. Um, there is uh, information in the bulletin about the One Great Hour of Sharing, which is an offering that Presbyterians collect around Easter. And since it is Easter, it's a good day to collect that. I hope that you can um, donate to that. If, um, if you are a visitor, know that when we serve communion, everybody is welcome. You don't have to uh, meet any criteria except that you're here and you want communion. So come forward when your uh, row is indicated and there's no problem. Also, um, if you're not simply a out of town visitor, but if you live locally and you're looking for a church, this is a great one. So I hope you will uh, come back. Now I've said enough, so let's get on with the Easter fanfare.
Please stand as you are able as we join in the call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And join as we continue in the prayer of praise and adoration. O God who was, is, and evermore shall be, to you belong all praise and glory. Angels in heaven announce the dawn of your eternal order. Trumpets herald Christ's victory as the stone is rolled away. Our mouths are open to proclaim your mercies. We lift up our hearts to you, our judge and our redeemer. Amen.
join me in the litany for Easter. With the stone rolled away came emptiness. Of the cross that now pointed to greater truth and gospel. With the stone rolled away came questions. From those who were seeking a sign of promise, breeding confidence, assurance, and trust. With the stone rolled away came light. darkness of suspicion and fear to dispel the shadows of distrust, anxiety, insecurity, to radiate with beams of new hope and understanding about the life to be. With the stone rolled away comes a future. With the truth without shines the wisdom of ages, with a space to be filled with the company of those who through history confess Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Amen. be seated and join as we continue with the prayer of illumination. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and hope, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture is from, this one is from the book of Psalms, which can be found on page 565 in your Old Testament section of your pew Bible. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank 
at this time I'd like to invite all the children and youth to come down for a time for young disciples. Come on down. Come on down. Partner. Come on down. Okay. We have a boo-boo, apparently, and it hurts. All right, good morning. We're so glad that you're here. And for those of you who are visiting today, we've been on a journey. And we have a map. Lily, can you help me hold the map? Okay, so we started with Ash Wednesday, right? And then our first stop was a heart where we learned about how to love like Jesus. Because we're called to love like Jesus. And then the next stop were two question marks where we learned how to think like Jesus and how to make decisions that would bring glory to God, right? And then the next stop, we witnessed a baptism of Charlie. Charlie got baptized. And then our next stop is a picture of a church where we learned that we are stronger together as a group of believers and our church family keeps us strong, right? And then next is a butterfly, and that was the Sunday that we learned about the gifts of women, and also we could think about the own, the gifts that that God has given us that we can share with others too. And then last Sunday was Palm Sunday, where we talked about that even though Jesus knew that coming into the city in Jerusalem would ultimately end in him dying on a cross, he trusted God's plan and went anyway. So we tried to learn to trust God like Jesus did. And today is Easter. What does that mean? The Easter bunny comes to my house. Yeah, the Easter bunny came to your house. Yeah, that's right. But it also means that Jesus rose from the dead, right? The tomb is empty. He's not there anymore. Now, when he came out of the tomb and his disciples saw him, 
He told them to go and tell everyone that he is alive. Go tell the, my disciples that I'm alive, right? And even though we weren't back in Bible times, we are Jesus' disciples. And today he still calls us to go and to tell people the good news that he is not dead. He is alive. All right? So I challenge you to do that as you go throughout the rest of your day, as you celebrate Easter with your family, and as you go back to school after spring break if you've not had it yet. All right? So if you are going to blast, you are going to go with Miss Suzanne. She is in the back. And, um, but before we do that, I want to make a quick announcement. We are having the Easter egg hunt after, right after service, about 11.15, because some of us have to get a, a picture with a very special person today. Um, and then we will be out there. But if it's 11.15 and I'm not out there, please go ahead and have fun and search for your eggs. Um, so they'll be out on the deal lot. All right. So let's say a prayer together. Can you pray with me? Yeah. You ready? All right. Repeat after me. Dear God, Christ is arisen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and as he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he'd said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So it's early in the morning. It's Sunday, the first day of the week, the day after the Sabbath. It's not a special day for those people in those days. And people in Jerusalem would be going to work soon. And so Mary goes to the tomb just to be sure Jesus is properly cared for and put spices on him and things and, you know, check his wrapping and mourn a little bit. Some other women may have gone with her, depending on which gospel you read. But when they get there, they find out that nobody's in the tomb. He's not there. What? Where could he be? They begin to ask around. Have you seen his body? Where is it? Did you move him? Now John tells us that Mary went to get Peter and John and told them the tomb is empty. Just note that the first person to tell anybody that Jesus rose from the dead was a woman. Just saying. So they take off running. They run there. And John gets there first. Just saying. He makes it clear three different times that he got there first. He beat Peter. Peter can be the Bishop of Rome, but I beat him to the tomb, you know. Well, they go in, and sure enough, he's gone. He's not there. That much they believe, but they don't know yet that he's raised from the dead. Well, slowly they find out. I mean, Mary's hanging around. She sees these two angels. They ask her why she's so sad. Why are you weeping? She says, well, where is he? And she turns around and sees the gardener. Ah, he'll know. She asks him where Jesus' body is. And he just says, Mary, as if to say, Mary, really? Come on. Mary. And she realizes that it's he. He's risen. He's alive. Nothing will ever be the same again. You can piece together details from all four of the gospel accounts. They're all slightly different, emphasizing different things. But you can get a pretty good picture of what happened that morning. And what you see is a lot of confusion until Jesus appears to them a couple at a time, later to the twelve. And there's this dawning <coughs> wonder, dawning wonder that he's risen, he's alive. Now, none of this matters if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. None of what we do here matters if he didn't rise from the dead. If the resurrection isn't true, we wouldn't even be here. <coughs> if he didn't... <coughs> well, that was all a long time ago. A great deal has changed in our world. Even in the last 50 years, a great deal has changed. The world we grew up in is gone unless you're 15, in which case it's just getting faster. And many people are sure that the world is not going in the right direction and that the end is near. And for some people, and maybe for some of you, this is a time of darkness and fear. The poet Herdelin in Germany asked once, in a dark and destitute time, what are poets for? It's a good question. But poets remind us of truth that's so easily forgotten or ignored. So in a dark time, what does the empty tomb mean? It's like a candle that you light in the darkness. It's a faintly flickering light in the middle of a dim and fearful night. 
there's no joy, there's no happiness, there's no reason for living. You know, we continue, but we don't really have hope. So in a time of turmoil, what does the empty tomb mean? It means joy, hope, and meaning. It brings us life. We find ourselves without joy when life takes a left turn and leaves us bereft. Some big change happens. Someone dies. We lose an opportunity. We find that joy is gone. I'm here to tell you that Jesus will bring your joy back. Or hope. We look at the future and we can't find any hope. We can't see the path forward. It's just full of uncertainty. We become hopeless. We despair. But Jesus is alive. And just like those first disciples saw no hope until they saw that he lived, so it is with us. And maybe for you, life just doesn't seem to have any meaning. No matter what you see, what you do, it doesn't matter. You just live until you die. It's all sand, you know? Who needs it? Jesus comes to bring us meaning and purpose. You might have to find something new to do. You might have to learn a new skill, change jobs, start a different kind of life. It might not be easy, but Jesus brings us meaning. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, there's a long, difficult, tangled up passage about the resurrection. And in the middle of it, Paul says, if it is for this life only we've hoped in Christ, We are, of all people, the most to be pitied. Short version of that is, you're wasting your time unless it's true. But if it is true, if he did rise, then everything has changed. Everything is made new. And suddenly we have a new way of seeing things, and it's all different. It's all new. So Jesus tells Mary, you know, don't hold on to me. And some translators put that as, don't cling to me. No one's really sure what he meant. But he might have meant, don't hold on to the past, to the way I was. Don't hold on to things that were. Things are not the same. They'll never be the same again. But we want to hold on to stuff. We need to hold on to stuff. Some of you are wishing that I wouldn't retire. You want me to stay until you know, the week after your funeral. <laughs> then you don't care. You're clinging to me. And some, some of you are wishing I was gone already. But I will leave and you will be fine. Kathy leaves today, and we will survive it. People come and go. The church marches on. But the thing is, we don't like change. But life is full of change. That's the one constant you can count on, is that everything is going to change. Probably by Wednesday. It's going to change. But if you are in a place today with no joy, it's still Easter. And if you don't have any hope, it's still Easter. Even if you're scared, it's still Easter. And if you're clinging to the past, 
It is still Easter. The Lord is risen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith using the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is in is unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten by made of one being with the Father. For him all things were made. For us and our sight, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified by conscious Pilate. He suffered death and buried. of sins, 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's receive our offering and gifts. may be seated. As I said earlier, this is the table of Jesus Christ. It's not the Presbyterian's table. So, 
If you're here and you believe in Jesus, or you want to know more about Jesus and you want to believe, do come forward for the sacrament. When you come up, an elder will give you a piece of bread. If you want a gluten-free wafer, just say so. And then you'll turn and we'll have the trays of, of wine. The red glasses, little red ones, have wine in them. And the clear ones have grape juice. So you get what you like, what you need. Partake, and then as you go back that way, you'll see trash cans where you can dispose of the little cups. It's easy. And again, this is Jesus' table, and he invites all of us to come and receive his blessings. And so let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In every time and every age, O God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks, for your mercy is sure, and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion you gave us Christ Jesus, who sets us free from death and leads us to life eternal. And so with all creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join the universal church and the heavenly choir. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage, to thwart the desires of evil, to show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand upholding the just. And blessed are you, O Christ, servant, you came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty and the powerful, to confuse the deceivers, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things to give hope to those who long for peace. And so remembering our Lord's self-giving love, we proclaim that great is the mystery of faith. Blessed are you, Spirit, giver of life. You give us the words when we have nothing to say. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher now and always. Come now, Prince of Peace, Spirit of Love, Breath of Life. Bring to all this hurting world the joy that Mary knew and teach us to proclaim with her, I have seen the Lord. In the unity of the Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, now and forever. And we pray the words that Jesus taught us 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On that night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink of it. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so let us come. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
and let us pray together. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Amen.
Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Don't forget that. Go forth and tell the world. They still need to hear it. And as you go, may all the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day forever. Alleluia. Amen.